What do Genghis Khan, the American Civil War and the UK's health service have in common? The answer is, perhaps surprisingly, maggots. Yep, you heard correctly, maggots. Okay, stay with me. You see, flies, as with most insects, undergo a complete metamorphosis from egg to adult via a larvae and a pupil stage. Within the flies, for many of the species, we refer to this larval stage as the maggot, a stage devoid of limbs whose main purpose is to consume as much as they possibly can. And in our maggot's case, this could be a hundred times bigger than when they emerge from the egg. Now, the specific maggots I'm talking about are those offspring found in the species of Califoridae, the blue bottles and the blowflies. Most folks come into contact with these flies and their offspring in conditions that would mm, seem less than optimal, such as decomposing meat or your moggy's cat bowl. But some of these species are the very opposite of detrimental and are in fact medical marvels. Having maggots crawling around your wounds may not sound great, but the medical use of maggots, known as debridement therapy, has been around for a long time. Legend has it that Genghis Khan went marauding across Asia with a wagon load of maggots to help his injured soldiers. Their wounds would be stuffed with the maggots who would feast on their flesh. Not the living tissue, but on the dead and decaying tissue that surrounds these wounds. Fascinatingly, Mr. Khan and his armies are thought to have known that there are maggots that not only feed on their necrotic flesh, but also maintain a clean wound after they have munched off the infected tissue. And you know what? The Mongols were not the only ones. Evidence exists from the ancient Aboriginal Nyampa tribe of New South Wales and Australia, the hill people of Northern Myanmar, and the mines of Central America. The removal of festering flesh was a global phenomenon. Oddly though, it didn't really catch on in mainstream medicine for a long time. And indeed it took another warring epic to bring it to our attention. A surgeon called John Foyney Zacharias, during a stint at a hospital in Daneville during the American Civil War, started properly paying attention to this phenomena. He was the first to intentionally use maggots to remove decayed tissue with results good enough to produce, as he says, eminent satisfaction. And these maggots also clean the wounds of their bacteria. However, this work was soon stopped thanks to the likes of Robert Koch and Louis Pasteur arguing, quite rightly, for good hygiene. This was seen as a no-no for maggots. And Alexander Fleming sounding the death knell with the advent of penicillin. Because who wants munching maggots squirming around your flesh when a simple pill saw everything out? But time waits for no bacterium, and by the 1980s, the magic antibiotics were losing their own war, with a new elite army called Methicillin-Resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or more commonly known as MRSA. The hospital superbug required a new weapon, and boom, maggots were back in the wound. You see, it's not only the action of removing the terrible tissue by dissolving the flesh into a digestible feast that makes them so great, but also the eating of the nasty bacteria, such as the MRSA, and then destroying it in their guts that makes these juveniles amazing. Fast, efficient, and very effective. And in the UK, available for all on the NHS. And for those sensitive to the idea of maggots crawling around wounds, well, now they come in what looks like little tea bags. What could be more comforting than that? All hail the mighty maggot. <laughs>